Good morning, folks. The Mobile Observatory Project is in Pittsburgh. We'll be at Squaw Valley Park from 9 to 11 a.m. for those early birds that want to come out and say hello. And then from 4 to 7 p.m., we'll be right back there. I went to high school at Fox Chapel, and it is indeed good to be back in Steeltown. Hello, Mercury. Goodbye, Mercury. Solar conjunction is over for him, and he's exiting the Soho Lasco frame. Bounce back to Pierre-Marie Robitaille. If you don't know him, he shattered the world record for nuclear magnetic resonance imaging and couldn't have done it without deciphering a key flaw in physics. One of them is the misapplication of Kirchhoff's law in overbreadth. The truth allowed him to break records when they said it couldn't be done, and it will eventually reveal the non-gaseous state of our liquid star, and perhaps we're also a step closer to revealing what that microwave background radiation really is. Big Bang? I think not. I've linked the paper out just confirming that those BICEP2 results were so not what was originally purported. Also got a great link for you here showing that those upper atmospheric flows that we're learning are so dependent on solar flaring are also a primary driver in Earth's significant weather changes. Hashtag solar climate forcing. Let's go around the world tying the precipitable water overlay to the low pressure systems. Southern Hemisphere sees the clockwise spin to the low always sucking in and creating those convergence lines back toward the equator. Often, we see the strong, oppositely spinning high pressure pushing out so hard it bows the convergence lines almost 180 degrees. Bit of a different story when the land masses and weaker systems don't allow the pressure to be seen as well without the satellite infrared. Only two of the lows here are affecting land right now, although Iceland is about to see the crest top left there. If you're in a low-lying area, say in France, in the rain zone, Southwestern convergence could send you some flash flooding during tonight's pop-up showers. Let's look at 24 hours of temperature delta in the United States. The warm-up east and the cool-down central. It's due to the surface winds here. The lows are north, but this is their convergence in the states where the flow from the south meets the flow from the north, as always. Where they equalize their pressure, moisture, temperature, and electric potential is where the people below know full well there's something happening above. Two solar filament eruptions, two impacts expected, however we've got almost nothing so far. Last night we had some minor readings that may have been a very weak shockwave. It's also possible they were slower than expected and we'll see something today. Sensitive magnetometers and electron flux don't lie, we're all calm geomagnetically. But also calm is our star. If you listened to Dr. Uyen in our fly on the wall yesterday, remember part 3 is open access, you know exactly why the star fell silent and also why the sunspot number plummeted. Incomers have negative umbras and positive surface features surrounding them to complete the superphotospheric loop circuit of those magnetic fields. The other incoming space weather watch belongs to the Earth-facing coronal hole. It lost nearly all of its force, however, as it turned this way, and we should really not expect either a speedy solar wind stream, powerful interplanetary shock, or major ramps in the quake factors. Time will have revealed all by the weekend. Between the coronal hole and the incoming spots to the north, like right between them, a thin dark rope of plasma lingers above the solar surface. That's another filament, folks. If you want to know more about these images you're seeing, click my name anywhere on this page and find the Sun series playlist. It's a great introduction. It'll also be linked for you in the comments and the About tab below as well. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.